Grip strength declines during aging, and that's what we'll see here, with data for men on the left and for women on the right. On the y-axis, we've got average levels of grip strength plotted against age on the x. And then, starting with the data for men, we can see that grip strength peaks around 35 to 40 years at around 50 kilograms for men. In women, grip strength peaks a little bit later, 40 to 45 years, and that's around 33 kilograms. But then we can see for both men and women, grip strength declines during aging. Now, in terms of defining what's optimal for a given biomarker, how it changes during aging is one part of the story. The other part is all-cause mortality risk. So what's optimal for grip strength in terms of all-cause mortality risk? And that's what we'll see here. With the hazard ratio for all-cause mortality or risk of death for all causes plotted on the y-axis, plotted against grip strength in kilograms on the x. This is a meta-analysis of 42 studies that included more than 3 million people. So in terms of what's significant, we put up a red line at a hazard ratio of 1. Remember, when the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval, those are the dashed black lines, are completely below 1 or completely above 1, we have a significant association. So we can see that that's true for all levels of grip strength as grip strength increases, such that the 95% confidence interval is completely below that hazard ratio of 1 for all values of grip strength greater than around 9 kilograms. Now, in terms of the maximal effect, that's greater than 54 kilograms. And from this plot, we can see that a relatively higher grip strength is significantly associated with a reduced all-cause mortality risk. More specifically, the highest grip strength was significantly associated with a 65% reduced risk of death for all causes. Now, in terms of what's optimal, now we can answer that question. So greater than 50 kilograms for men and at least greater than 33 kilograms for women and then avoiding the age-related decline. Now, the good news is that grip strength can be tracked and potentially optimized. And the gold standard for clinically measuring grip strength is shown here. This is the Jamar Dynamometer or the gri Jamar Grip Strength Meter. But this is a $300 device or more. So are there are other grip strength meters as effective or and more affordable? So one option is the Camry EH101 dynamometer as shown there. And the, the importance of that grip strength meter is that it's strongly correlated with the Jamar dynamometer or the gold standard grip strength meter. And that's what we'll see here. So on the Y axis, we've got the best Camry measurement. And on the X, we've got the best Jamar measurement. And then we can see that there's a significant positive correlation between these two grip strength meters with a correlation coefficient in that green rectangle of 0 0.94. Note that a perfectly linear correlation is 1.0, so 0 0.94 is pretty close to as good as it can get. But note that these data are in 42-year-olds. What about at older ages? So to date, as far as I know, there's at least one study that's looked at that as shown here with an average age of 66 years old in the study where they combine the Jamar and the Camry grip strength meters. And then we can see the correlation at the far right. So when looking at the average or maximal value for the dominant hand, we can see that the correlation between these two grip strength meters was strong. So anything defined at, as greater than 0.7 is considered a strong correlation. So the correlation when looking at the dominant hand for average or maximal values was 0.821 and 0.81, so strong correlations. But the best way to use the Camry, if one's going to get that uh, instead of the gold standard Jamar, is to take the average value or the maximal value for six times, as shown there. And the correlation was a bit stronger at 0 0.855 and 0.852. So if you're looking to get the biggest bang for the buck, testing six times is the way to go. So from both of these studies, we can see that the Camry grip strength meter is significantly co correlated with the gold standard grip strength meter in both young and older adults. So at this point in the video, I would then ask what's my data and then show my data as I'd been tracking it for many months. So I should say that I do have the Camry and I haven't started tracking it yet. That's going to start next week. So stay tuned for a future update video where we'll see what's my data in terms of grip strength and how well I'm able to resist age-related changes or not in the next few months. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, NED quantification, 
or microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also Grimage, green tea, diet tracking with Chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.